Hi, this is Kathy Dam, and I'm going to show you how to run an ANOVA in JASP. So I have the data set open where we entered class standing and the price paid for books that semester. So you can see that class standing is marked as nominal data because we have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. And it's actually ordinal, but nominal will work for our purposes. Then we have the price paid for books, and those are numbers. So those are going to be represented here with a ruler. So to run our ANOVA, we're going to click on ANOVA and then select ANOVA again. Now we are going to make sure that we use the, um, the right data for in the right categories. Our dependent variable, which is our outcome variable, is a ratio. And you can see that's marked with rulers. So we're going to put books because that's the price we paid for books. That's our outcome variable of interest. We're going to put that in the dependent variable. Then we have class standing, and that's going to be our independent variable. And we note that here as fixed factors. And you can see that the kind of Venn diagram uh, coincides with their pictures. So right off the bat, we can see that we have, it is run the ANOVA, and we have a significant finding because our p-value is less than 0.05. And here is our F observed value. So now that we have significance here, we can choose to run a post hoc test. So we are going to scroll down to where it says post hoc tests. You're going to select the independent variable that you'd like to analyze. In this case, we only have the one, which is class standing. And then you notice in this case that it offers the Tukey, the Shafe, the Bonferroni. In this case, um, I can put both the Tukey and the Shafe up so you can see how they differ. But when we run the post hoc test, you can see where the significance lie. So essentially freshmen and junior significantly differ from each other. Freshmen and senior significantly differ from each other. Freshmen and sophomore do not. The way it is laid out this way, it might be a little confusing as to what the pattern of the results are. So I would encourage you to, draw, to scroll down to additional options and click on descriptive statistics. Now you can see the means. And these are in alphabetical order, not in um, order of class standing. So you want to make sure you make note of that. And if this report here wasn't clear for you, then you can come up here where it says descriptive plots and put class standing on the horizontal axis. And what you'll see on our output there is that now you can visualize it a little bit. So remember, it goes freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So what it appears to be, according to the output here, verified with our post hoc tests up there, is that freshmen and sophomore don't appear to differ in how much they spend on books. However, juniors spend more than freshmen and sophomores, and seniors spend significantly more than juniors. So there's several ways in which you could describe this. You could say freshmen and sophomore don't differ, juniors spend significantly more than the freshmen and sophomores, and seniors spend significantly more than juniors. Or you could try and say, with each increasing year of education, you spend significantly more on books, with the exception of jumping from freshman to sophomore. So there's lots of ways that you could describe this pattern, but this is what we've gleaned from our post hoc test. So this picture, the reports of the means, but most importantly, we verified with the p-values that we have for our significance tests that all the groups significantly differ from one another except for freshmen and sophomore. They do not significantly differ in the prices paid per books. Send me an email if you have any questions. Thank you so much.